Okay, so very good morning to all of you. So today in this uh, particular workshop, uh, we try to understand the whole uh, concept of blockchain and the blockchain technology, how it has been evolved and uh, uh, the practical aspect of this blockchain and how we can make it uh, applicable in our day-to-day uh, -day life and uh, uh, or different type of uh, purposes. So uh, let me welcome you all in this particular workshop. And uh, uh, as you know, I am associated with this particular technology for uh, last uh, four, five years. And uh, many research uh, also has been done in this particular area. Uh, once it has been very much popular in uh, 2016 and 17 and uh, everybody is talking about blockchain and uh, uh, they are thinking that the blockchain will change the change everything in our life and if, um, with respect to uh, different applications and uh, right now we are also uh, visualizing some of the features that uh, blockchain can be used in different criteria or different uh, business models and uh, right now there are many examples of it and many many organization many institutes have already implemented this particular model and they are using it but uh, at the early uh, stage around 2016 17 uh, people are saying in the research community like uh, blockchain will uh, mm, will uh, replace the cryptography and uh, everybody is saying that uh, blockchain is so secure that uh, it can be uh, uh, taking the place of cryptography but uh, yes that was the hype that we have uh, seen but in some aspect it is true also in some application it is true also and uh, we'll see today how it is true and how it is different than cryptography. Uh, if it is different than cryptography, then why it is using the cryptography? Then all those things we'll see uh, in detail. See, whenever new technology comes into the existence, uh, we are looking for the drawback of the previous technologies. And we are looking for the advantages of the new technologies, right? and uh, if the if we find out that the flaws of the previous technologies will be overcome by the new technology we adopt the new technology and uh, at the same way we have adopted this particular technology also so before that we have different technologies which are available but because of its uh, scale of implementation that already been done and many people knows that yeah this is the blockchain actually Previously, people are saying that uh, saying the blockchain technology in a uh, in a paper, right? And uh, they doesn't have uh, the real implementation knowledge of it or the real power of the blockchain technology. And people are thinking that how it can be implemented if we are talking about different network. Uh, so we'll we'll focus on that and we'll try to understand uh, that how this particular technology came into the existence and why it become very popular so we'll go into the slide and we'll try to understand today's banking system and we'll try to relate it with the with the uh, blockchain and we'll try to see what are the different um, advantages it is giving us so let's see uh, in this particular example we have uh, in this example uh, we have some banks if you can see this is one bank bank a this is bank b and this is bank c so we have three banks available like in india we have so many banks right let's say uh, these two people uh, let's say i'll say it is a a and i'll say the name b and let's say the name is C. So let's say we have these two people uh, who is having the bank account in in some bank in US. Okay, 
and this is the person who has the bank account in let's say in india so he is an indian guy and these two are the um, the people from united state now in the united state uh, like in india we have rbi as a central bank right so rbi is uh, is, is the central authority of all the bank in india in the same way let's say there is some bank central bank in us which is a central authority of all the banks now i think it is clear to all of you what the diagram says now let's go to what is that every bank which is having the bank account will have the ledger ledger means ledger is nothing but some sort of document that that they are maintaining some sort of log that they are maintaining in which they have the column like uh, this is the name of the person what is the deposit amount there are more, more, many more uh, attributes like uh, the date of deposit then we have a withdrawal the date of withdrawal so all those things are there we are not going to that in detail you just assume that there is uh, two columns are there name of the person who has the bank account in a particular bank and he has some initial amount to it the deposit amount and that is maintained in the ledger a ledger of the bank so let's say if we'll talk about i have the account in sbi so sbi is maintaining my ledger right and sbi maintaining the ledger of all its customer so for all its customer they are maintaining a ledger ledger is just like a Uh, a register a book where they are maintaining uh, the log log means the transaction that has happened into the particular account or by the particular account so instead of name here we have the account number so we assume that we have the name and the, the depositor uh, deposit amount and every banks are maintaining their ledger as well as there is a central bank this central bank is maintaining the ledger of all the other banks so all the other banks can share their information of the transaction and this central bank will update its own ledger in a uh, let's say end of the day or maybe um, at the weekend okay so we don't know what is uh, what what is the actual procedure they are using maybe at the end of the day they are sharing their uh, uh transaction to the central bank and central bank are maintaining the ledger here also we have the bank and this bank ledger is also maintained by the uh, rbi which is a which is our central bank of india means uh, it's not a central bank of india it is a main bank or you can say the authorized bank of india now let's assume that that a or the person a want to uh, uh transfer a uh, some amount let's say uh 20000 dollar to c which is a person in india so how it will be done how it will be done so it will be done in such a way that a will request its bank a to transfer the money to c right and it will give the detail the bank of c who is the uh, let's say the bank is sbi so sbi uh, username and uh, sorry sbi's account number uh, ifsc code all these things information a will give to its own bank now what this bank will do is this bank will send this particular request to its central bank that a want to transfer money to c and this central bank at the end of the day it will update its ledger and based on uh, the ledger updation in the next day it will give a request to the rbi or our central bank so i'll say it is rbi because rbi is the central bank in india now this particular central bank uh, will find it out that what type of transaction it is it is a deposit transaction or it is a transfer money from uh, a account to c account now what will happen is a this uh, this uh, rbi bank will update its ledger and give this particular request to sbi 
and then SBI will change its lesser detail and deposit the 10,000 rupees. Let's say that Tina, Tina is the name of this, uh, uh, this customer. Here we have the Bob of the customer. So Tina will be deposited uh, the amount, let's say uh, $20,000. So this is how the transaction took place where two central authority will be working together for the transmission of the, uh, of the transaction. Now, if we are doing the transaction from the same country, let's say the US and Bob want to send a money to Alec, right? So how it will be done? So it will be done in the same way, like, uh, uh, like it has been done with the Bob and the Tina, like Bob will, will initialize its uh, transaction and uh, it will give the request to its own bank and its own bank will give a request to the central bank in the US and the central bank will update its ledger and give this request to uh, bank B of Alec and uh, the money will be deposited in, in her account. So this is how the flow will be done in today's scenario. Here we have these two authorities, these two authorities are called central authorities. So there is some uh, central entity which are validating the transaction between two persons. And for doing that, so what are what they have to do? They have to change the ledger all the time. They have to maintain it. They have to. Um, uh, uh, they have to have the employee to do all those things. They have to make the system for all those things. So what they do is they will charge the money for these type of transactions. So they may charge the commission or they may charge the transaction fee. So let's say the commission they are uh, taking as the 0.5% uh, of total amount. Or let's say the transaction uh, fee they are taking as let's say uh, in a calculation for the uh, better cal calculation, I'll say 0.5% again. So 0.5% they are take, charging the commission and 0.5% they are charging the fee. So 1% actually they are charging and it will be charged in both the side, the side of the US and the side of the bank. So total 2% will be less, 1% here and 1% here. This 1% is distributed, some of the part will be taken by this bank and the 1% of this, some of the charge will be taken by this bank. So total amount that has been uh, lapsed here uh, from transferring the, uh, transferring the money from US to India will be how much it is you can see it is two dollar so uh not two dollar it is how much the one percent of uh uh twenty thousand it will be twenty dollar am i correct so what i'm saying is some short of commission will be taken by the banks and you can see it is not only one transaction that is happening. There are so many transactions that will be taken place uh, in day-to-day -day, uh, life. So uh, for uh, 200, it will be $2 and for 2000, it will be $20 and for 20,000, it will be $200 if we are taking 1% of that uh, commis uh, commission. So 1% will be taken here and 1% will be taken here. So how much money it will, uh, the, uh, the Tina will get, it will not get the 20,000. It will get less than that. So definitely the money will be lesser than what a Bob has been sent. Now to uh, reduce these uh, mechanism, we have some more uh, you know, mechanism that are using today is uh, some uh, union, uh, Western Union. Have you heard about Western Union? So Western Union is uh, uh, is the way how we can transfer the money from one uh, place uh, to another uh, place or one country to another country. 
so uh, western union is one way how we can uh, transfer the money the charges are still there they are also having some commission charges and uh, transaction fee they are taking but it is faster than that faster than the banking system so it is faster than that but is still they are charging the money now do we have or do we find any system uh, in which uh, we can say that these commissions and the time that are taking from transferring the money from one country to another country will be less so taking that uh, problem in mind to taking that particular problem in mind in 2008 a white paper has been published this is the white paper that has been published the white paper the the title of the white paper is bitcoin a peer to peer electronic cash system who is the author the author is santoshi nakamoto and the email id has also given and the site has also given like bitcoin.org now in this particular paper they have uh, given the concept of bitcoin that how we can uh, use a decentralized peer to peer system in which we can transfer the money from one person to another person in a instance means more faster way first thing is more faster way second thing we can have more security third thing the non repudiation will be there means if a sender is sending the money so sender cannot deny that he has sent the money if a receiver has received the money he has he cannot uh, uh, deny that that he hasn't uh, 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 received the money so proper author uh authorization will be there as well as there is one more thing is all the ledger that has been maintained in the bitcoin is immutable immutable means nobody can change the ledger ledger means it just like a a, a, a register right where we are maintaining the whole log that are happening so if i want to change something so we have to just wipe it wipe it out and we have to write uh, those thing again but here in the digital ledger there is no provision of modification so if we do the modification here in this paper it has been proved that the modification is not at all possible it is not at all possible it is impossible to modify the the ledger okay so that there is a immutable ledger that they are maintaining in this particular uh, research paper that they have published it has been published in 2008 and 2009 the bitcoin comes into the existence so santoso nakamoto Mot so is not a person actually it is some anonymous anonymous name that has been given by maybe some group of people or maybe some group of company so still we don't know who is the owner of the bitcoin okay and there is uh, and this is this is uh, very clear that santoshi nakamoto is not an inventor of bitcoin he is just a, a name has been an anonymous name has been given alias has been given by the group of people or by the group of company so they have made a decentralized system unlike this system so this is a centralized system where these are the authority or authorization entity which will authorize the transaction and because they are authorizing the transaction they are charging the fees here also there is a fee but it is very less very very less so very less amount of fees 
they are having in this particular uh, system and very less than uh, the banking system as i told you it is very faster very secure there are the the internal or distributed author authorization system uh, the ledger are immutable means once the transaction will be done nobody can uh, deny it later on because the transaction is already there everybody can see it it is very transparent and there is a fee to it so here we can say everybody can see it means everybody can visualize it so it is open to all it is a public ledger that they are maintaining so the ledger is nothing but the public ledger so everybody can see their transaction what they have done or what the other person has done now at that point point of time you might uh, got some questions okay the questions may be you are thinking that what is this ledger how they are maintaining it if we are saying that it is secure then why it is public so if we make something public the security is the big concern second thing is how it is very faster what are the mechanism that we are doing for the authorization right and how we can say that the ledger that we are maintaining is immutable nobody can change it nobody can mutate it nobody can uh, do any type of uh, or uh, nobody can um, uh, 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 means uh, remove the integrity of the data. So all those are the questions that you might have in your mind. So let's see uh, the answer of the questions. So as I have just discussed, to solve the problem of the central banking system, uh, a Bitcoin has been evolved. This Bitcoin is is came into the existence in two thousand nine and uh, become popular. And there is a anonymous name that they have given, and they are saying that the uh, Santoshi Nakamoto is the inventor of blockchain, based on the paper that has been published. Okay, let's talk about Bitcoin first, and we'll relate slowly to the blockchain. why why we are doing that because the blockchain actually the technology was there there is no doubt in the technology that blockchain technology is not new it is it is beyond 2009 or 2008 but the thing is that proper implementation of blockchain will be done by bitcoin okay so that's why let's go and find it out how bitcoin works and slowly will relate what is the part there in the bitcoin we say as a blockchain getting it so we'll go go slowly and we try to understand each and every aspect of bitcoin and each and every aspect of blockchain in very minute way uh, at last uh, at the end of the lecture uh, i think uh, if you want you can put your question in the chat or at last you can ask me the question i am happy to uh, give the answers now come to this uh, part the blockchain in this in this uh, blockchain phenomena we'll first talk about bitcoin now what is a bitcoin so bitcoin is a digital currency also called cryptocurrency created in january 2009 so bitcoin has been created in 2009 and the paper with a white paper where everything was written about the bitcoin is published in 2008 now this bitcoin offers the promise of lower transaction fee so transaction fee is there okay transaction fee is there but lower very less transaction fee they are using then traditional online payment mechanism and is operated by a decentralized authority so here we doesn't have a central authority or a central bank like uh, like your uh, traditional banking system so online government issued currencies the bitcoin is very different government issues currency may be in the form of bond 
maybe in the form of gold, maybe in the form of uh, the paper. But here in the digital uh, world, the Bitcoin is nothing but the digital currency. You cannot uh, physically uh, own it. Okay, it is there in your wallet, digital in the digital form. Bitcoin cannot be printed. First thing, and their amount is very limited. So, what are the amount that uh, in two thousand eight in the white paper they have discussed? They have discussed that we have only twenty one millions Bitcoin. That much of Bitcoin only this system can generate not more than that so it has been already been defined like in india if uh, if uh, the currency were less and uh, we are thinking to print the currencies so we can print it right there is no no limit that we cannot print it otherwise there is no uh, option of printing press where we are printing the currencies so time to time uh, by the central authorities uh, we used to print the currencies okay and but here there is a limitation in the bitcoin that only 21 million bitcoin will be created not more than that it uses a decentralized and distributed ledger system known as blockchain with peer to peer network now in this particular sentence there are many technical terms that has come first technical term that has come is called decentralized second is coming is distributed ledger i'll let you know what we mean by ledger so ledger is nothing but the logs right but here the this this is a digital ledger known as blockchain so which is blockchain blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger system getting it big blockchain is nothing but decentralized and distributed ledger system with peer to peer network here we have the concept of peer to peer so you you will see that there are many technical terms that came first is decentralized second is distributed now next one is the blockchain and the peer to peer network so we'll see all these technical terms one by one and try to understand so let's see the first one which is called centralized and decentralized as well as distributed network what are those right so let's see this example in this example there are different nodes and here we have uh, the central entity or the central database let's say this is my central database and how the connectivity has been done in centralized so here let's say you assume that this is your rbi and there are different banks all those banks are if they are doing the transaction they will uh, uh, inform to the central entity or the central authority which is your centralized network and this is the centralized network okay based on that your banking system has been done we have the rbi and rbi is regulating all the banks where the connection is this one to uh here it is one uh many to one connection right so there are many banks which are uh, dealing with only one there are many banks which are dealing with only one uh, central bank so that's why it is uh it is a central uh, network look like this so what is a central network centralized means that a single point has complete system knowledge so this one has the complete system knowledge so we have let's say bank one bank two bank three bank four so we have different banks in india and uh, we we don't know that uh, 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 that every bank how how they are performing i know about my bank let's say i am working in sbi so i know about my bank i don't know about any other bank but rbi knows about every bank so this central means that the single point has complete system knowledge and makes all the decisions informing every other node across the network so this node will inform all other nodes and this node will make the decision so decision will be taken by only one node everything will be processed only by one node 
so what is the problem here in the centralized network or the centralized system the problem is if the centralized goes the centralized system goes off then every everyone will be in a problem so this is uh, one thing let's say a central thing will be elapsed a central entity will be elapsed so what other entities or other nodes will do they they will be orphan right and uh, there will be chaos all the time so that's why the central network the centralized system is or the centralized network is not a reliable network now to see that problem in 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 existence um, the people have come up with another type of network which which is called decentralized so there is a central entity now we have many entities which which can do the same process what a central entity is doing so we have let's say four five authorities and all those four five authority will uh, do the same thing what this one authority is doing so then the decentralized means that no single point make all the decision so all these points or all these entities or all these decentralized entity will make the decision it is not in the hand of only one person or only one central entity every node makes a decision for uh it's and the resulting system behavior is the aggregate response so what it is saying they are doing the uh, they are making the decision from the local let's say uh, this is the part of this particular central entity so it will take the decision among let's say these three nodes and this will take the decision from these two nodes and this will take the decision from these four nodes but ultimately they will share their decision and they will make the um, the the global decision or the aggregated decision and will distribute these decision or they will distribute this information to all the other nodes this is called decentralized network here the advantage is if one if one fails let's say this particular uh, entity fails so these entity will not become orphan they will be adopted by other entity this will be adopted by other entity this is the idea behind decentralized network so i hope you understood now let's talk about uh, distributed network now what do you mean by distributed network in the distributed network it says that all these single single node will work as a will will take the decision means they have the power to take the decision as well as they have the power to process everything by itself now also they can process with the help of all other entities or all other uh, entities let's say we'll talk about uh, that in india we have this system right this is a system in india can we make this system means can we make some of the bank as the uh, authorized bank let's say uh, the big big bank let's say we'll assume that uh, one is sbi mm, let's say this is rbi let's say this is hdfc let's say this is uh, uh, union bank so assume that there is some uh, authorized bank like uh, in today's uh, in today's system like a decentralized system but it is not fully decentralized okay now assume that the andhra bank uh, the the uh, other other bank are the part of the union bank the um, punjab national bank has also merged uh, also merged in itself some of the banks in that way they have made the cluster of it so right now it is a type of uh, this particular network okay in in today scenario but it is actually not because it is a one entity like uh, hdfc is let's say access bank and all other private bank let's say yes bank and 
Dana Bank or all other private bank are, let's say, for that the authorities as uh, SGFC. Uh, for for SBI, let's say, uh, other banks are the part of SBI, and this SBI will become uh, the authority for that. But and they will take some of the decision, but main decision will be taken in a collaboration. Now you assume that you assume that there is no RBI. There is no RBI. Now you assume that all these are individual banks and all these bank will has the capability to take its own local decision as well as if they will find out some of the decisions that has been taken in collaboration, they can do it. Let's say if there is a money transfer between SBI to SBI, so SBI will take the decision. If there is a money transfer from SBI to Andhra Bank or the Union Bank or the other other bank, so these two uh, node will take the decision. And if some more banks are involved, so all those banks will take the decision. So are you getting it? What I am saying in a distributed network, all those node has the equal capability. And if they want to take some sort of decision, if they want to process some sort of data, they will do it in a collaboration. Means they will give their resources for solving any type of problem and making the decisions. So in a distributed means that the processing is shared across multiple nodes but the decision may still be centralized and use complete system knowledge. So it will be centralized decision. Centralized decision means the decision taken by all the nodes. It is not like only one node will take the decision. No. Maybe one node is agreeing upon some uh, suggestion and the suggestion will be taken by all the nodes. So ultimately, all the nodes should be agree and should agree means at least 51% of the of the nodes should be agreed in one decision. Let's say if the decision is yes and the decision is no and let's say 49% has says that the decision is no and 51 says that the decision is yes. So yes will be taken by all 100% at last. So they will do the processing in collaboration, but whatever decision will be taken, this decision will be distributed and should be taken by all other entities. Are you getting it? This is a distributed network. And in blockchain, we talk about decentralized, means there is no central entity, as well as distributed network. So your blockchain network will look like this. So here we have two property. One is a, it is also a decentralized second, but it is also a distributed. So we need the both the property should exist distributed and decentralized. So I think it is clear to all of you. What do you mean by distributed and decentralized? This is your central. This is a decentralized and this is a distributed. There are many confusions that are uh, generally happen that People are saying that blockchain is a decentralized network as well as blockchain is a, um, a distributed network, but blockchain is both. Now let's talk about another technology, which is a peer to peer network. What do you mean by peer to peer network? Now blockchain is a decentralized and uh, distributed network, but it is also peer to peer network. Okay. Now what do we mean by peer to peer network? In peer-to-peer -peer network, the peers are computer system. So peers are nothing but one computer system. So one computer system is one peer. We have another computer system with another peer. We have another computer system and this particular system is another peer. So we have many peers, okay, which are connected to each other via the internet. So what it is saying that all these peers, all these peers will be connected with each other using some sort of Connections, right? So we have some peers. Let's say this is uh, one peer. We have another peer. Then we have another peer. All these peers are connected to each other. This is the connection that they are owning. 
Now in this particular system, file can be shared directly between systems on the network without the need of central server. Now we don't need a central server. So what happened in a traditional way? We have a server. Let's say I want to download a film. Let's assume that I want to download a film. Film is a, what is film? Film is a uh, file, right? And this is one peer. This is another peer. And this is another peer. Peer means just the system. And if the peer A, the peer A want the film to be downloaded. So what it will do is it will give the request to the central uh, server and central server will send the file to it, right? Now what happened here? What happened here in peer to peer? In the peer to peer network, we have these entities, but we doesn't have the central entity. This is the central entity. So central entity is not there at all. Instead, all these nodes are sharing the files and all those nodes can help to download the file. Let's say A want to download the film. Let's say the film is, uh, let's say we are saying as a M, some movie. A is requesting a movie in this particular peer-to-peer -peer system. There is different peer-to-peer -peer software. So first all the nodes, all the peer-to-peer -peer nodes should install the software, which is a peer-to-peer -peer software. And they all should be connected to each other. Let's say B has a movie M and C has also the movie M. So A will request to download movie M. So what will happen? In the peer to peer system, A can download the movie from B as well as from C. But in peer to peer system, A can download some portion of the movie from, let's say, uh, some portion of the movie, let's say, M to one, uh, uh, means, uh, zero minute to, let's say, uh, 100 minute to from B, and the same movie it will be download from 101 minute to let's say 130 minute from C. So this particular movie has been taken by B and this particular part of the movie taken by A. So it is not like A will download only from B. In the peer to peer network, A can download the file or download this particular movie from B as well as C because both are owning it. So I think it is it is uh, clear to all of you what do you mean by peer to peer network means they can they can share their resources to help another peer. So the file can be shared directly between system in the network without the need of central server. In this world, uh, each computer on peer to peer network become the file server as well as client. So A is a client in that particular time. Let's say B wants some movie. And let's say D is, uh, is the movie that is owned by A. And D is also the movie that is owned by another uh, a node C. So B if want the movie D to be downloaded, it will download the movie, some of the portion, let's say portion one will be taken by A and the portion two will be taken by C. And if we have more, peers in the network, let's say we have more peers in the network. So some of the portion could be taken by another peer also. The only requirement for a computer to join a peer to peer network are an internet connection and what we require peer to peer software. So different type of software like in um, when when I was uh, 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 when I was a student in NIT Raurkela, so uh, we have a peer to peer software that is called DSpace. In the DSpace, we share the files, we share the movies, and this is shared among all the hostels. So we have around eight, nine hostels in the institute, and there are 10,000 students, and every student has, let's say, the desktop and the laptop. So everybody will share some sort of movie, and in the DSpace, we can actually uh, see what is the movie available and we can download it and it is very fast 
because of this peer-to-peer -peer technology. So it is not like if we are if we have the movie at hostel number one, and if we want to download the uh, 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 and as well as hostel number two, and if I want to download the same movie, so it will be downloaded from hostel number one only. No, it will be taken from host, some of the portion hostel number one, some of the portion host, hostel number two. That's why it will become so faster. Getting it? So you have. Uh, 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 learn uh, you have uh, seen this uh, space called torrent so torrent uh, was the movie sharing uh, uh, software in which also everybody in the globe can share the movie and can download uh, the movie so we doesn't have to go to the central server to download the movie let's say the youtube Instead, I'll go to the torrent and I'll find it out. Uh, my movie is available, then I can download it. So I am taking the example of movie. You can take the example of file. Now this particular system will be taken into where uh, the blockchain, and this system will be using blockchain technology. And top of the blockchain, Bitcoin is using it. Okay. So what is the Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is nothing but the alternation or alternate way of money transmission. Uh, it is a distributed uh, system in which there is no central entity. Uh, they are using the blockchain technology and this peer to peer network. So blockchain is nothing but the peer to peer network uh, distributed and um, uh, decentralized network. and uh, so till now we know about these things right so we know that there is a problem in the banking system in 2008 one white paper came under the name of uh, santoshi nakamoto in 2009 bitcoin.org has been uh, created a uh, bitcoin has been correct created bitcoin is nothing but some sort of cryptocurrency we have to buy the cryptocurrency let's say the the rate of the cryptocurrency is 10 dollar so we have to buy let's say $20 and we have to put into the wallet. So let's say there is a uh, with the help of $20 I'll get two bit Bitcoin. Let's say I want to transfer $2 from uh, to my friend. So what I'll do is the portion of one Bitcoin I'll transfer to my friend. Now it is just like the value of the Bitcoin. The value of the Bitcoin is 100 let's say the ten dollar and i i want to send two dollars so it will take uh, it will take the portion of it and it will uh, transfer it in that way it is uh, the transmission and is going on now let's see the real functionality of the bitcoin and how it is working okay so this is the example of uh, p2p network just now i told you with the help of the diagram that in the peer-to-peer -peer network every node is connected to each each net each node but here in uh, 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 in the centralized based only central entity is there and everyone is using the central entity for uh, getting the file. Now let's go and uh, see how this uh, blockchain works or you can say how Bitcoin work. Okay. Let's say a user requested a transaction. Okay. A transaction will be requested by user. Transaction means the money transmission uh, from one uh, uh, one user to another user so the sender is initializing this transaction now after that this transaction a block representing the transaction is created so one block is, is is created by representing the transaction so one block will be created this particular block will be broadcasted to all node in the network so the as I told you, it is a peer-to-peer -peer network. Everybody in the globe is connected to each other, like your torrent, right? If you install the torrent software, you will be connected to everybody who is having the torrent software. In the same way, who is having the Bitcoin uh, software with their uh, uh, system will be connected to the Bitcoin network. So the block is broadcasted to the node in the network. So all the node will get the block. Now, what is this block? Block is having different transaction. It is not only one transaction, but the sake of example, we'll make it simple and we'll say that 
there is only one transaction in the block and this block will be shared by all other other entities or uh, and this is the let's say the sender uh, node or the initialization initializer node and this will share the block to all the other nodes now all the node validate the block and the transaction now the responsibility of all the nodes not all the nodes the nodes who are doing the validation those are called miner in blockchain uh, there are nodes there are people with computer which are called miner the responsibility of the miner is they will validate the block and the transaction and once the block will be validated the block will be added to the chain that is in the blockchain so the blockchain will be shared with all the nodes and all the nodes will put a new block in their own blocks the transaction get verified and executed so once the block will be added to the blockchain the transaction will be get verifi uh, verified and executed and let's say he's person a who is sending money to b so at that particular time b will get the money and there is a fee so who will get the fee the miner who validated the block or the group of miner who validated the block will get a fee a very less amount of fee will be taken by miners so there are not only one miner there are different miners who will validate the transaction and create the block for the blockchain so i think it is it is a very brief way how we we can know what do you mean by blockchain let's go into the detail right because we are not here to learn the brief thing we are here to learn in a detailed way so that we can understand this particular technology in a very uh, minute way before that let's see some of the definition uh, related to the blockchain so we have different uh, we have different definitions okay let's see one by one all those definitions so the first definition says that uh, is a distributed ledger which is a distributed ledger blockchain is a distributed ledger so blockchain is public distributed ledger public right public means it is public to all everybody can see who has done transmission uh, transfer of money to which particular uh person or which particular entity so the blockchain is a public distributed ledger L ledger of facts replicated across several computer assembled in a peer to peer network so as i told you there is a peer to peer network this is one node this is another node this is another node this is another node so all nodes has this block of chain that is called blockchain right there are different blocks which are chained together so you see in every peer in the network will have these blocks chain block of chain right and everybody has the replica of it so let's say if a new block comes into the existence so how this new block will be added into this particular blockchain let's let's see it and uh, find it out that how it is happening let's say we have a new block that is coming into the existence and we have different peers right all these peer are connected to each other because it is a peer to peer network so all these node will be connected to each other in a distributed manner now this particular uh, block comes into the system by another let's say another uh, nodes another node okay who is responsible for creating this particular block or this particular transaction now this block is nothing but the group of transaction now this block will be validated by let's say 1 2 3 4 four miners are there 
let's say it it we will will give some uh, proof of work and that proof of work will be done by let's say minor one so minor will will say that i have uh, done the proof of work and this is the result of my proof of work after that maybe at some time minor 2 has also done the proof of work 4 has also done the proof of work and 3 has also done the proof of work and they will get into some results now a has shared the results in a public means all will all can have it two also share four also share three also share let's assume that out of four three have executed and given the right result so that result or the origin of that result will be taken as a winner so let's say origin is 1 one has taken as a winner and because one has validated all the thing so one will add the new block into the blockchain in its own system now the same thing will be given to all other node in the system the validated block there is a con candidate block first so previously it was a candidate block after the validation it will become a validated block ready for attaching into the blockchain so now a new block is coming into the blockchain and it has been attached with the blockchain and again now everybody has the same set of set, set of blockchain available that is that this these uh, blockchains or these chain of blocks is nothing but ledger and these ledgers are public see one can see all the transaction two can see all the transaction three can see all the transaction four can see all so all the entity in the network can see all the transactions okay whether it is a minor or it is a non minor everybody can see the uh, the ledger that's why it is called distributed as well as public ledger so i think you understood this now come to the permission so in the blockchain is appended only database across the distributed network of them so here we doesn't have to give the permission to add up uh, the data on it right everybody every node has the trustworthy uh, uh, property and based on that every node will add the block in their blockchain once the proof of work has been done so proof of work is a good concept we'll see in the later section of the lecture that what is proof of work and how it is useful here business definition so according to any business what is blockchain so blockchain is an exchange network for moving transactions so any transaction it will perform uh, so blockchain is nothing but the exchange network means it will do the exchange of all the transaction that will be taken in the network either this transaction is a value asset between peers without the assistance of intermediary means there is no central entity required and these all these distributed uh, nodes can exchange the the transaction among themselves for transmitting the value or as well as asset any type of asset database if we'll talk about uh, the blockchain definition uh, based on the database so what is that the blockchain is a back end back um, database that maintain a distributed ledger that can be inspected openly this is a open database now in the perspective of data structure what is a blockchain so blockchain refers to a type of data structure that enables identify and tracking transaction digitally and share this information across a distributed network of computers created in a sense of distributed trust network now here the blockchain it says that it is nothing but some sort of data structure so blocks these blocks are with a chain right so it is some sort of linked list so one block has having all the information another block having all the information the information is nothing but the transaction and all those blocks are linked together so it is a type of linked list and uh, all are shared among the nodes in the network and all those nodes are the trusted 
nodes that's why it is called a trusted network because it is distributed so it's so it says distributed trusted network so these are some of the definition i hope some of the portion of your doubt will be has been clear you might have many others doubts uh, let's see some of the some of other detail related to blockchain and try to understand this technology now uh, we have different terms that we'll use in the blockchain so before going to the actual blockchain and we'll see how it 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 works let's see some of the terms so the first term is the transaction so transaction is nothing but an exchange of value amount among participants on the blockchain network that is called transaction so exchange of value among the participant in the blockchain so all the Mm, people or all the nodes who are the part of the blockchain network will get some sort of you know, value exchange exchange of values that is called transaction participants participants are individual accessing the blockchain network through computer to exchange values so let's say exchange value means if I, if one person is uh, transferring the rate um, the money to another person that is the meaning of exchange the value unconfirmed there is the block and the transaction that are yet to be verified that is called unconfirmed unconfirmed block or that that block is also called candidate block which is not been confirmed till now then we have uh, the term called consensus consensus means the process of agreeing to the transaction on the blockchain network so as i told you in this example if one will do the proof of work and it will share the results to all the other nodes if all the other node will be uh, agreeing upon the work has been produced by one then this block will be validated and the validated block will be added to the blockchain so that process is called consensus consensus means agreement on some point hashing hashing is a, a cryptographic algorithm that we'll use here so hashing generating a random string of a character for a given input so if we have an input and uh, based on that if we are creating a string uh, that is called hashing that process is called hashing we'll see the hashing technique uh, later in this particular lecture now next is immutable what do you mean by immutable something whose record cannot be changed is called immutable so you should know that blockchain is immutable we cannot change record in the blockchain even though it is public okay even though it is public so we'll see why we cannot do okay then we have miners okay this is not uh, the correct uh, this is m i n e r miners so we have miners miners validate new transaction and record uh, and record them on the global ledger which is a blockchain on average a block the structure containing tran transaction is mined every 10 minutes miners complete to solve a difficult mathematical problem based on cryptographic hash algorithm so what is a miner as i told you in this particular example miners are nothing but who will do the proof of work so proof of work one work will be done and based on this particular work and it will take at least uh, the whole block in the bitcoin blockchain will be added in every average is every 10 minutes maybe it is uh, less or maybe it is more it depend upon who is doing the fast mining okay so here what i want to say is what i want to say is in this particular uh, blockchain the miners are playing a very important role what are the role that a miner is uh, uh, playing the miner is playing uh, to validate the record 
as well as to create the block. So there is two responsibility with the miner. Miner will validate the transaction, validate the record, and, um, and record them, means uh, will, will add them, and miners can add the block into the blockchain. So these are the some of the property of the miners. So we have all these terms that we'll use in the later section of the lecture. That's why we, we should know all those terms. Now, what are the activity in the Bitcoin? Okay. Why we are coming into the Bitcoin again? Because we, we first understand what is happening in Bitcoin and then we'll relate to other applications. So the activity in the Bitcoin, the first activity is making transactions. So anyone, let's say entity A is, make, is creating a transaction. Uh, the transaction is like this, that A, want to transmit a date uh, 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 a money to b let's say it is it is going to transfer uh, 20 dollar so definitely it will send uh, two bitcoin right to btc this is a transaction that that will be made by who will made it a will made it receiving transaction so who is receiving this particular transaction so at last we will receive this particular transaction verifying transaction so who will verify the transaction all other nodes in the network all other node let's say this is a this is b sorry uh, will not or you can say b c d e all other node will validate uh, the transaction so who will who will do that who are the miners who are the miners so miners will validate the transaction and then this b will receive this particular transaction and the the ledger will be validated means the account of a will be updated and account of b will be updated that is called ledger maintenance means 20 dollar will be reduced here in a's account and 20 dollar will be added in b's account so definitely 20 will not go into the b's account there is some portion, let's say 19.2 or 19.8 dollar will be given and 0.2 dollar will be given to the miners. Maybe uh, if your blockchain says that only the first miner will get the, uh, the portion of the Bitcoin, so it will take it. Otherwise, so this dollar is nothing but the portion of the Bitcoin. There is no transmission of a dollar. There is the transmission of coins. So the portion of the Bitcoin will be taken by, let's say, this, this particular uh, miner because he has uh, created uh, the proof of work very, uh, uh, very fast. So he will get the chance. Or there is some uh, blockchain in which this will be distributed among all the miner who will do right proof of work. Okay. So it depends upon block the blockchain technology or the cryptocurrency technology what other are using so previously it was the bitcoin so bitcoin is just uh, giving the uh, the fee the, this particular fee to only the miner who has uh, done it very fast that is the verification and then transmitting the transaction after the very verification this e will transmit all the block to all other entities so this block will be created this block will be transmitted to uh, e will transmit it to d uh, e will transmit it to b e will transmit it to c e will transmit it to a so all these entity will made or to add uh, this particular block into their blockchain so i think it is clear to all of you what are the different activity a uh, bitcoin uh, will have now let's see uh, how miner create new block okay so what how uh, in in what way a miner will create the new block so miner will verify the transaction right so how it will verify the transaction tracking the source of digital money being spent so 
tracking the source who is the source that will be first verified Sec second check for double spending of the same money let's say if i am i want to send the data to uh, my friend so what i'll do is i'll purchase the bitcoin first first in my wallet there should be bitcoin now if i have let's say two bitcoin and if i am spending if i am sending three bitcoin so miner will find it out that i have two bitcoin how it will be validated because it is a public ledger right everybody can see my account means how many uh, bitcoin i am owning that will be seen by everybody in the network because it is a open public ledger it is a ledger distributed ledger distributed means all have this ledger but it is also at the same time it is public so uh, the miner can check it i have spent three dollar but i have two dollar so that will that is a validation that can be done after that checking if the total transaction volume is within the allowed range of zero to one million bitcoin so how many bitcoin uh, this particular uh, bitcoin system can have only 21 million because i have all the blocks available i can verify that till now how much bitcoin has been owned right let's say there are 21 million already been owned so who is transferring or who is making a new transaction now is the person who is owning it or is the person who is not owning it so that's that thing will be well validated so all these things will be verified so this is the ver verification process now what is the next one after the verification so this is how this uh, mining uh, process work okay we'll see one by one all these uh, mining works and how it will be done So let's see, Alec want to buy the product from Bob using Bitcoin, okay? Let's say uh, there are the, uh, the person Alec and there is a person Bob. Bob has a mobile phone and Alec want to purchase the mobile phone. But Alec will purchase the mobile phone from Bob using Bitcoin, not using currency. Let's say the amount is ten thousand uh, dollar is the amount of the mobile phone. So how many Bitcoin is required? Hundred Bitcoin is required. So Alec will transfer hundred Bitcoin to Bob. So Alec will transfer hundred Bitcoin plus some fee. Plus some fee. Let's say point two for miners okay so that much amount it will initialize so this is the initialize transaction that will be initialized by alec now this particular transaction will be given so she uses her private key and signed a message with the amount of bitcoin and bob's address requesting a transaction so actually what happened is every node or every entity in the blockchain will have two type of key one key is called private key another is key is called public key. now private key is known to that person only so you assume that this particular bob has private key i'll say private key and public key so the private key is used to authorize the transaction so everybody knows that because everybody has the public key of that particular person so everybody will uh, find it out the signature of the uh, sender that is a alec and validate it the transaction is validated so how a person can know that alec has initialized the transaction because of the public key every person has the public key public key has taken as a 
name of that person and there is a private key private key is for the digital signature for validating whether the transaction is correct or not or whether the transaction is initialized by authorized entity or not this is the second process after this the transaction requested by alec is bundled into the block with other transaction so now the transaction this is the transaction which is initialized by the bob and there are so many other transaction this is transaction 1 transaction 2 transaction 3 transaction 4 here we have transaction 5 transaction 6 and this is let's say transaction 7 so all those transaction will be bundled and will become a block so it will be bundled and become one block this one block will be shared between all the miners so we have miners 1 2 3 4 4 four miners are there all miner will share this particular block and what is inside the block inside the block we have so many transaction now after that the miner will mine it so what miner will do first it will validate the alec transaction using algorithm in a process called mining so how it will be validating validating the private key of it whether it is digitally signed by that particular person or not so it will validate all the transaction transaction 1 transaction 2 transaction 3 up to transaction 7 so it will it is going to validate all the transaction that will be done till now because every miner has the block and inside the block there are so many transaction after validating all the transaction miner has to do a proof of work what is that proof proof of work proof of work is some sort of mathematical calculation assigned by the blockchain network this particular is just like uh, you assume a chest you assume that there is a chest inside the chest there is some reward okay inside the chest there is some combination combination you know what is combination is is some sort of lock in which if you know the number uh, you can open this particular lock so in this particular chest let's say we have four combination every combination is from 0 to 9 so we have some possibilities right here we have a uh, 10 possibility here we have 10 possibility here we have 10 possibility here we have 10 possibility so this is a exponential problem so uh, here what we'll do is we'll do the brute force means we'll check whether the combination is 0 0 0 or not then we'll check whether the combination is 0 0 0 1 or not then we'll check the combination is 0 0 1 0 or not then so we'll check all the combination after change checking the right combination the proof of work will be done means the chest will be open once the proof of work will be done a miner or a group of miner they will share the results of the uh, proof of work and because other people has also done the proof of work so they will validate it whether it is correct or not so if they will find out that 51% of the people 50 more than 51 of the 51% of the people find it out that we got the right result so that block will be validated and a header will be created so every block has some header about the header we'll see later on after that that block will be validated and become the part of the blockchain so now it will become the part of the blockchain and then bob after this uh, um, blockchain will be added sorry block will be added into the blockchain bob will get its bitcoin so alec has sent the big bitcoin here but it is taking some time to be conclude and this blocks are nothing but ledgers okay where the transaction is there and then this uh, this uh, uh, transaction will be validated and then at last bob will receive the money so bob is happy here alec is also happy and the miners are also happy at that particular time 
So this is how this Bitcoin works. Bitcoin works, okay? This is an alternate of banking system. That's why we are learning Bitcoin. Now you, you, the same feature will be taken place into the blockchain also. So instead of, let's assume that instead of money, what we are doing? We are sending some message. Okay. So we are sending some message. Let's say the Facebook. In the Facebook, through chatting, we are sending some message. So what we are doing is, in this particular message, we, we are going to sign. What we are going to do? We are going to sign it. How are we going to sign it? With the private key of, of my private key, I'll sign the message. After that, that message, because there are so many messages, like the transaction, there are so many messages, it will become the group. And it will become a block. That block is called candidate block or unverified block. This candidate block will be given to the miners. These miners will see whether there is a right entity or not. Means who has sent the message. Right entity has sent the message or, or any hacker has sent the message. So who will find out with the help of the private key. So private key is known to me only. So that's why uh, it, is, it is secure in that way. So it will be authorized, transaction is authorized, then the miners will do some sort of proof of work, like some mathematical calculation. And based on that, the, the miner who has done the first calculation will get some sort of reward. After that, this message will be, because the combination of the message are the blockchain, this message will be, in, will be uh, attached into the blockchain and will become the part of the blockchain and the receiver will now receive that particular message from me getting it so this particular application instead of money we can have anything we can have let's say medical record so if i want to uh, put the medical record of my into the blockchain the same procedure i'll use let's say uh, i want to have the information of my land record Okay, so land record means I am owning a land of that particular uh, area at that particular uh, uh, point. This is the coordinate of the of my land. This is the current price of my land. This is the owner name of the land. All those are come into the message. This particular message, I'll sign it with my uh, private key and I'll give into the system. The system will make a bunch of uh, record in one block and give it to the miners. Miners are nothing but the authorizer, authority, which will uh, uh, use in the land uh, purchasing and uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, there is a land acquisition authority, right? And in every, uh, uh, in every state there are, uh, or in every district there are land uh, acquisition authority, where we'll go and register our land. So these are the person you assume that. They will get the reward as a form of their monthly salary and they have to validate whether this land record is right or not. It has been owned by the person or not. So who will do that? Group of miner will do that in the consensus and if the block is validated, uh, they will do some sort of uh, proof of work if the system allow it. If the system doesn't allow the proof of work, they will do some sort of validation and every people will agree upon that land is uh, owned by Suresh Sharma and this is the land size, this is the owner, this is the purchasing date and all those things and that will be put on to the block. That block is public to all but the thing is that nobody can mutate it. Even these authority who are acting as a minor cannot mutate it. So you see there are many applications. There are medical field applications. There are land record. There are voting system. We can also use it. Uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, let's say the KYC system, like your, uh, you know the, about Aadhaar card, right? So can we make, Aadhaar is a central entity. Can we make it as a distributed? We can make it using blockchain. So. Uh, KYC and all, uh, we we have to do all the time, right? Uh, KYC, 
that also can be done we can make it a, a, a digital uh, digital let's say my uh, educational background information digital uh, educational background information let's say if i am applying for the job and uh, so for what i have to do is i have to fill the form i have to put my uh, degree i have to put my experience i have to sign it uh, self as attested it and give it to the uh, person who is uh, the uh, uh, my future employer but if i am using the digital uh, way of uh, using it using blockchain so i don't have to send them all my document again and again let's say i am applying to company a company b company c so if i am sending uh, i am applying for it so i have to send the document to a b as well as c right instead if i am using some uh, uh, blockchain entity so in the blockchain my whole data is stored i just have to send my public key to all of them through the public key they they should know that what is my educational background because all the thing is validated as well as put it into a blockchain so these are different uh, applications there are number of applications that in today's world many people are using for blockchain but the first application that has been come up using blockchain was bitcoin that's why we are learning it and all other uh, application that has been made are mainly based on the bitcoin uh, architecture if you see the timeline in 1991 actually the concept came that is called the first work on a cryptographic secure chain of blocks was uh, distributed by uh, sutar haber he is the scientist who has given he says that every document digital document what we are creating you put the time stamp if you will put the time stamp along with the uh, document the document cannot be tampered or the document cannot be uh, modified in the future that was the concept in 1991 given by this person this concept is the concept of blockchain but till now uh, but, but till 2008 nobody has used the concept of this uh, uh, blockchain now in 2008 the bitcoin the santoshi nakamoto published a paper as i told you i shown you the paper that paper is published uh, in the name of santoshi nakamoto the bitcoin a peer to peer uh, system in which they have explained the usage of the blockchain and to uh, replacing the current banking system now in 2014 back to uh, blockchain around 2014 attention shifted from bitcoin to blockchain so previously in 2019 2009 to 2014 15 everybody was talking about bitcoin nobody was talking about blockchain now suddenly in 2015 as i told you in in 15 16 now we got uh, this uh, blockchain word has been coined and it it was very popular at that time we are thinking that blockchain can replace the cryptography and whole security concept will be uh, will be rewritten or will be redefined uh, but the bitcoin to the blockchain and hundreds of crypt, uh, cryptocurrency were issued so here we have after that uh, bitcoin and in 2014 and 15 there are many other bitcoin will be issued like uh, there is uh, ether ether is another bitcoin uh, by ethereum that you will see today uh, in the second section ethereum right so ethereum is another blockchain technology um, like a bitcoin ethereum is also a uh, blockchain technology but here this uh, cryptocurrency is called ether in 2015 hyperledger uh, was uh, created uh, by uh by unix and this hyperledger has been uh, funded uh by actually ibm uh, the company who has involved in hyperledger is also a type of blockchain that has been used in 2018 set of blockchain use cases 
different solution based on blockchain technology in healthcare, supply chain and financial sector will come up. So definitely uh, by transforming from, from 2008 to, 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 to 2018, it is a very long time, around 10 years. And in 10 years, we have find it out the real world application of blockchain. And nowadays, everybody is moving their system from the centralized system to the blockchain. So this is the uh, how your block is look like. Here we have one part that is called header I told you and another part are the transactions. So we have the block content where we have different transactions and uh, there is a transaction count that how many transactions are there in the block and in the block there is a header. Header has some five, six things. One is the technical data. What is the technical data? The technical data includes some ID of the block, a version number uh, and the size of the block. Uh, then we have previous blockchain hash here. So we have the hash of the previous blockchain, which will be generated by SHA-256. It is a hash function, which is used for generating the hash value. So that is also there in that way. One block will be linked to another block. So there is one block. Let's say this is a block number one. Hash is calculated of that particular block H1. There's a block number two. In the block number two, there is hash of, hash of block one, as well as they are creating its own hash by the Merkle uh, uh, root uh, uh, method. Then we have the timestamp, means when a block has been added into the blockchain, a timestamp has been added and the difficulty target based on the uh, how hard your proof of work is. So here proof, proof of work come into the existence. And then there is a nonce. Nonce is a random uh, number that will be taken care to generate the hash. Generate the hash. So every block has a hash. And every block has a Markle root value also. And this particular hash will be used. Let's say there is another block, block three. So in the block three, there is hash of block two and the hash of its own. So you see in that way, it is connected and there is a making, making of chain. The very first block in the blockchain is not having any reference to the previous blockchain. That's why that block, that very first block of the blockchain is called Genesis block. Okay. The first block of the blockchain is called Genesis block. Uh, let's see one. Uh, one block. Okay. I want to show you the block. Uh, the block you can see in uh, uh, blockchain.org. Uh, this is a site where you can see uh, the block that has been added using the Bitcoin. Let's see what is there. So you, if you'll see this particular site, here you'll find out this latest block. Can you see that latest block and there is a latest transaction. So the transaction that is taken place. See, you see the transaction is taking place. See, there's a real world, a, a real updation that is going on means it's still at 12, 11. There are so many transactions that is taking place. And what is the amount of this transaction? So you can see the bit Bitcoin amount. This is one, 1 1.1. This is 0 0.26 Bitcoin and this Bitcoin, each and every Bitcoin has some value. That value is there in the US dollar, you can see. Right now, what is the, uh, what is, uh, the value of one Bitcoin? You can see here, the price is changing based on the supply and the demand. So you can see one blockchain has 10.944K 
dollar means 10,944 dollar uh, for one Bitcoin. This is the price in today. See, it is written price 10,940. So it is changing, right? It's just like a stock market. The stock is changing just like the, the Bitcoin price is also changing. Okay, uh, this is the number of transaction has been done in last 24 hour means three uh, three lakh twenty seven thousand one hundred thirty four uh, Bitcoin has been uh, uh, transmitted and the transaction has been done three point three double zero million Bitcoin has been transmitted. So this and it uh, and how much it can go it can go up to. Twenty one million not more than that. Now let's go to the block. As I told you, block has some number. This is called block number. There is a minor. Minor is unknown. There is some name also, and there are unknown minor. Let's see inside the block how it looks like. So once you click the block, so there are different blocks, right? In the block, this is how your block look like. So block has the block ID. This is the block ID. And every block has a hash value. So you can see this is the hash value. The hash value is alphanumeric number of a particular size. In this, we are using SHA 256 hashing algorithm to create the hash value of the block. The confirmation has been done by two minor. This block will be confirmed by two minor. So these two minor will get the reward. The timestamp when this block will be added into the blockchain. This is the timestamp. See the time is also given and the date is also given. This is the name of the uh, number of the blockchain that has been given. The miner who is unknown. Do you want to see the miner who is the miner? If you click this particular link, you will find out who is the miner. So he is the miner. As I told you every entity in the blockchain has a public key so this is the public key of the miner getting it there is no name at all but the transaction is public see total bitcoin that he is received see how much bitcoin he has so one bitcoin how many dollars 10000 around 10900 dollar right and how many dollar it has received that miner has received how many dollar that miner has sent and finally what is the balance so this is the balance of that particular miner so you can see uh, why the people are coming into the blockchain and why they are giving their computational capability here getting it so this is about the miner let's go previously we'll see the block So as I told you, we have many blocks. You can see there are many blocks. There are many ID. So each block are uh, attached right with uh, with the chain. And what is the chain? Chain is hash of the previous block. So based on that particular link only. So see, three minutes ago, another block has been added. Previously, we are seeing uh, 9024. Now it is 9028. So just now, three minute uh, it has. Uh, taken for adding into it some some are taking 20 minutes some are taking 40 so average is this 10 minutes in the bitcoin network let's go and see the block so here you can see uh, the miner then number of uh, transaction in this particular block so how many transactions are there around 2628 transaction are there so as i told you in one block there are so many transactions what is the difficulty? This will tell you the difficulty level of proof of work. This is the Mark Markle root uh, value. We'll see what do you mean by Markle, uh, Markle root if the time will permit. Merge, uh, then bits. What what is the bit? Means what is the size of this particular block is given? Sorry, the bits are there. Then the, this is the size of that particular block. So you can see the the bit size so it is not more than 10 mb right uh, very small block size is very small that's why 
every node will have these block of chain block of chain it is not like a film right one gb one file no it is not like that no no nonce nonce is nothing but some random number has been taken for generating the hash value this hash value okay this hash value so every block has a hash value and that hash value will become the part of the next block that's why they are attaching to ether they see volume of this particular transaction see how many volume has been done and then there is a reward how many reward there is a block reward and there is a fee reward so two type of uh, fee will be taken by all the transactions so these much of bitcoin has been transferred and these much bitcoin was the fee so block reward means a miner will get this and there is a fee reward means all the other miner will get this so this is how you, the miner will be earning the bitcoin here we have transactions so you see this is one transaction this is another transaction and what is inside the transaction inside the transaction you will find find out the address of the sender this is the address of the sender is a public key right and this is the address of the receiver this is the address of the receiver now this is the fee that they are uh, taking they are having the zero bitcoin fee uh, and how much money they are transferring see this is the money that they are transferring so you can see 6.64 bitcoin they are transferring and this particular transaction is confirmed now in that way you see there are 2000 plus transaction in one block so how many time a miner will take for verification and how many time a miner will take for a proof of work proof of work is some sort of mathematical calculation that has to do that's why it is taking a lot of time for adding a block into the blockchain so this particular is taking 3 minutes uh, because of the computational capability of this uh, miner is more maybe so you see these these are all transaction if i'll go to another page you will find out many other transaction so i think the concept is clear to all of you right so these are again some transaction if you there are many many uh, transactions like 2600 plus transactions are there you can see each and every transaction is confirmed so once this block will be added into the blockchain added means see in that way it will be added into the blockchain the transaction will be successful and you see everybody can see the transaction see i i can see the transaction you can also see the transaction so these ledger what you are seeing is a ledger is a digital ledger and it is a public ledger so everybody can see it right and if you want to be the part of the bitcoin you have to make a wallet like you use paytm digital wallet or amazon pay digital wallet or any other digital wallet in the same way the in the bitcoin also you will have the digital wallet for the actual bitcoin network you have to go to the bitcoin dot org this is the actual bitcoin network in which you can be the part by uh, by uh, by a recommendation of another miner or another entity who are in the bitcoin okay then you have to choose your wallet wallet types are there buy bitcoin you can buy bitcoin from here also you can give the money and you can buy the bitcoin so some people are buying the bitcoin they are not the part of the miners or they are not the part of uh, the transaction verification and all but some people are the part of the verification so they will do the verification and all this is how your uh, bitcoin look like and your uh, there are, there is another network called ethereum ethereum is also a blockchain network where the cryptocurrency is ether ether so ether was the cryptocurrency here in the uh, ethereum so that about the ethereum you will see today in the uh, second session okay so quickly we'll go so it is a distributed ledger as you can see every block is a combination of uh, uh, transactions and every transaction has uh, uh, has uh, uh, many thing like uh, public address of the sender public address of the receiver 
how much data they are transferring, what is the fee that they are giving, all those things that are there. And how this channel signifies? This channel signifies that each block is, is, is uh, connected to another block. So every block has uh, three things. One is the data that you have seen. Data include the transaction. Data, what data include? The transaction and the header. Here we have the, the transaction. All the transactions, let's say over there we have 2600 transactions. So that will come as a data as well as uh, header. So inside the header we have many things like its ID is there, its uh, uh, size is there, its uh, difficulty level has been defined, uh, Markle root has been given, uh, then uh, what is the fee that they are taking, that detail was there. Uh, what are the other thing you can see in your uh, header, right? Then it, there is a hash, hash value. Hash value is some sort of uh, fixed value. Generally, uh, in the Bitcoin, it is using SHA-256 algorithm for creating a hash value. Then there is a hash of the previous block. Hash of the previous block. That is also there in the block. So how the transaction will take it look like the transaction is there is a public uh, address of the uh, sender. There is a public address of the receiver and the amount what they are sending. This is one transaction. Hash as the hash value I told you it is alphanumeric value and uh, this particular value will be generated by the SHA 256 algorithm and it will act as a fingerprint of the uh, of the block so in the block they will uh, find out okay uh, let me show you the SHA 256 Let's say SHA 256. Let's say we are uh, creating SHA 256. Let's say I have a message, okay? That I want the, let's say I have the data. Data is I am Suraj Sharma, okay? Let's generate the SHA for this particular data. So if I'll say calculate SHA, it will generate the uh, 32 bit, I think as the output. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It, it will be, uh, I think the fixed fix length, 32 bit is the fixed length that they are generating. Now, if you'll see this particular hash value here, if I'll change something in my system or if I'll change something in my block, the hash value also will become change. Let's say I'll change from capital S to a small s. You will see, you, are, you can see the hash value. Now I am generating another hash. You can see in the last I have E67. Let's see, the last I have E67 and the first I have 257. Let's calculate the hash of it. You can see complete hash has been changed. If I have done only the small changes, I haven't changed the whole thing. I have just changed a capital letter to a small letter. You can see it has been changed to 256 to F9B and it has changed from E57 to E86. And in between also there are many changes. So you can see that that's why the tampering in the block is very difficult. Are you getting it? So because of this hashing, the tampering in the block will be very difficult. So if somebody want to do tampering here, let's say somebody has changed the data, so hash value is also going to change. So if hash value is changing, 
So how we can find it out? The hash value has been changed. Previous hash values are there, right? So if somebody is changing the previous uh, hash value, let's say we have created a chain and this is the hash uh, value of uh, this node. This is the hash value of this node. This is the hash value of this node. Let's say first node is the Genesis node, which doesn't contain the previous hash value. But definitely this block will generate, will have the, uh, the previous hash value and based on the previous value, hash value and the data, they are generating the hash value. Again, if I'll do something related, if I'll do uh, some uh, sort of uh, creating some, some problem here, so you can see this particular hash value is going to change. And because the hash value is already there in my next blockchain, nobody can change the value which is inside the hash, inside the block of this. If they are changing, they will get to know about it. Are you getting it? If they will change something, some, uh, some uh, data here, so hash value is changing, but this in this node, the hash value is this. So the whole chain will be compromised. And for that, I have to change the whole, whole uh, blocks hash value. So nowadays it is very difficult because there are, you can see more than 60,000 blockchain is already there. We are in the 60,827 around. Huh? So you can see every blockchain need to be changed and to change every blockchain uh, hash value and the proof of work is it is taking average of 10 minutes. And do you see to, to actually change the whole uh, blockchain system, it is very difficult as well as you are changing to your blockchain. But what about the others blockchain? If you are sending the changed value to other blockchain, other blockchain entity will get to know that, that that person is doing some malicious thing. And at last you will be disconnected from the network. So if in the network you have been found that you are not trustworthy, you will be kicked out, kicked out from the network. So that's why we can say that the blockchain is immutable. The blockchain is immutable because of that particular way. As I told you, if I, you want to change the whole uh, uh, proof, uh, whole uh, hash value of the system, you have to do some proof of work. That particular proof of work is very slow and it will take at least 10 minutes in every block. So to, to doing that for 60,000 uh, blockchain right now we have, it is taking a lot of time. But if you do in your system or in your blockchain, you cannot do with other blockchain because these blockchain are distributed and everybody has the copy of it. You cannot change the copy of everybody, right? You can change the copy of yours, but you cannot change the copy of everybody. So that particular problem was uh, find previously in the uh, in this uh, Bayesian uh, general problem. In the Bayesian general problem, what will happen is there are different generals and they are attacking to one city. In this, uh, because of the communication problem, uh, some are saying to attack and some are saying to not attack. So in that, because there is no proper communication among all the generals, uh, they lost the war. How this happened? This happened with uh, the less coordination. Let's say we have a general one, general two and general three. If general one is saying that you have to attack to general two and general one is again saying that you have to retreat for general three. So if one entity is a attacker, or one entity is a malicious entity, the whole system goes off. So to solve this in the blockchain and in the Bitcoin, people have come with the algorithm. That algorithm is very old. That is called Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm. And this particular algorithm is used in cryptocurrency in nowadays. That is called agreement or consensus. So we have different consensus algorithm, which will be done in with the help of different uh, uh, 
blockchain providers. So the first consensus algorithm which is used in the Bitcoin as well as they are using in the Ethereum is called proof of work. Proof of work, as I told you, they will give some difficult question to you and you have to spend some uh, CPU amount of time, some, um, some amount of time in processing and then only you can get the result. Some sort of brute post. You have to find out the keys, then you have to do some sort of proof of, proof of work. And that is one consensus algorithm. Second consensus algorithm is called proof of a stack that will be used in EOS, uh, Cardano, Outboros. This is another blockchain. In that proof of a stack has been used. Proof of a stack means the if you are the legitimate person, you should uh, uh, buy some Ethereum and you have to pledge it. Uh, like uh, let's say if uh, somebody is uh, is want is want to open a chest of uh, treasure, so what he has to do, he or the group of people, if using if they are want to open a chest, and we have a group of people A, B, C, D. What they have to do in the uh, proof of work, we know that they have to find out the combination of the key. So the combination is there. You have to find out the key. That is called proof of work. What happened in the proof of stack? Proof of stack. Everybody, because they are they are having the some price. So everybody should be pledging the price with the lottery. Let's say they have owned uh, uh, how much lottery? They have owned one lottery. They have they have owned uh, two lottery. They have owned three lottery, and they have owned let's say one lottery. So who is getting the chance? the people who are pledging their more stack so because c has uh, own three lottery c will get the chance to be mined so that is called proof of stack some sort of stack you have to pledge then it is called dedicated proof of stack here the legitimate stack entity will vote for one person to become the miner that uh, that is a voting mechanism will come into the picture. That is called dedicated proof of work. US, BitShare, Steam, Toze, all those are the different uh, blockchain uh, uh, are there which are using dedicated proof of work as consensus algorithm. Then we have proof of elapsed time. Here it is a random value that has been generated uh, by the miners and uh, the miners who are uh, uh, putting the value near to the random value will taken as a minor. It will be developed by Intel and used in Hyperledger, uh, Sawtooth blockchain. They are using proof of elapsed time. Then we have another consensus algorithm which is called proof of authority in which uh, we, we find out the legitimate or the trusted person. How will find out the trusted person? If uh, that person has been mined previously, they say n number of uh, blocks. So we say that he, that particular miner is a trusted person. And that person will a lot to do the mining. That is called proof of authority. So the Ethereum, Cohen, test, uh, net test, and IBM Hyperledger, they are using proof of authority consensus algorithm. This is very time taking. As I told you, it will take uh, average of 10 minutes to take that in mind many other consensus algorithm came which is taking very less time so all these consensus algorithm are taking less time so at less time the block will be added into the blockchain so in this uh, consensus algorithm using the consensus algorithm all the miners in the peer-to-peer -peer network will having the blockchain if a new block will come they will do the mining and after doing the uh, verification of this particular uh, uh, blocks they will come to the consensus and after the consensus they will add this particular block into the blockchain so in uh, ethereum you will find out a concept of a smart contract through the smart contract you can add the transaction into the blockchain. So the smart contract you will see today in, and you will create a smart contract in the Ethereum blockchain today. 
what are the application as i told you medical record we can um, uh, enter we can use the e notary means uh, instead of uh, going to the notary for any uh, document to attach i have some e notary system uh, we can use using the blockchain we can uh, collect the taxes using using the blockchain there are many other applications related to different different areas like digital currency and fraud uh, reduction we can use it in e-commerce we can use it in global payment uh, remittance uh, p2p lending uh, microfinance keeping record we can have uh, loyalty program supply chain ownership of land or ownership of car or ownership of anything proof of identity we can uh, uh, use in the kyc intellectual property we can uh, uh, use like your patent and all we can make a record in the blockchain in the security we can equity and all share market we can put into the blockchain so the which share has been taken by which particular uh, person could be tracked very easily and could not be tampered private markets uh, debt uh, crowdfunding and derivatives in all these things we can use blockchain smart contracting can be used in straw gambling or digital rights you can see there are 50 plus blockchain real world uses use cases that has already been implemented by different different companies okay so here we have the list some of the list are if you'll find out here the google has done some enterprise google is building its own blockchain with uh, which will integrate uh, into a cloud based service enabling to store data on it and uh, to request their own white label version developed by alphabet incorporation so for the alphabet they have made a blockchain uh, if you'll see some ibm ibm is also involved in walmart you know walmart who is the walmart is the uh, big retailer uh, uh, retailer uh, chain uh, for uh, for that particular food safety and all they have uh, make a supply chain using blockchain border control using blockchain healthcare using blockchain shipping using blockchain real estate advertising using blockchain computation using blockchain land registry using blockchain energy distribution using blockchain so all those those are different application that has already been implemented you can see the power of blockchain in today's world so everybody is moving towards blockchain government everything is transparent uh, to the government uh, using blockchain we can make and uh, uh, in 2015 16 you might have uh, seen some of the Mm, a talk of uh, our prime minister he was also saying about the blockchain technology and they also happy to use in their governance right so why blockchain definitely it will reduce the cross the cost increase the speed increase the security reduce the fraud and reduce the risk so all these are the uh, benefit of the blockchain so blockchain is just like the democratic network and it is using distributed peer-to-peer -peer network there is some part of the cryptography that you this is the very basic thing of public cryptography private cryptography and hashing as i just told you the hashing the value of hashing let's say i am changing this particular s to a small s then your whole block the hash is changing that's why uh, the block is more secure there are many hashing algorithm and but in the bitcoin they are using this other um, blockchain algorithm they may use different different hashing algorithm uh, markley root uh, what happened is we have many transaction every transaction will calculate the hash of it every hash will calculate the hash of it and every hash we are again calculating the hash of it so at last whatever we are getting that is called markley root that is the part of the header if i have uh, if you remember i have shown you the header in that you will find out the markley root right 
so we have different type of blockchain public private consortium and the hybrid public is public to all like blockchain and the ethereum private is private to the organization so ripper and hyperledger you can make it by your own organization or by your own uh, something consortium is a community blockchain where uh, two or more company or two or more group can be the part so quorum hyperledger and cobra are the uh, example of uh, consortium blockchain then we have a hybrid blockchain is an example of private and public so some part are the public and some part are the private here fair uh, xfin is the company has developed a unique network for ramco system for the management of supply chain logistic so they have made the hybrid blockchain for a company called ramco systems so there are different type of uh, uh, blockchain so i think it is clear to all of you proof of work also i have shown you that's all from my side uh, so to to hack the blockchain uh, there is the first requirement is you should have the super super computer with you and 50 more than 50% of the majority of the entity should be sh should be yours then only you can hack the blockchain so because these two are not at all possible so that's why we conclude that blockchain is secure so we need 50% of the majority in the blockchain as well as we need the super computer in all the 50% so these two is not at all possible that's why we say the blockchain is secure if you have a small blockchain this is possible if you have a big blockchain like a bitcoin or the ethereum it is not at all possible that's all from my side